the main thing is there's like a sticker shock that he's leaving 113 million dollars on the table yeah. which uh it's not that's not necessarily like the way to look at it because mm. that's assume that's also including the fifth year mm, so that's right, like saying right. that if jalen brunson doesn't take this particular five-year deal that he'll never play in 29 30 whatever that year is that fifth year is he's gonna as long as he's having a normal basketball career he's on the same trajectory he's in he's healthy he's gonna play in that year and make a lot of money then now so he is giving up a lot of money though there's no doubt about that uh th so the way to look at it is what he's given up over the next three years he's making less than whatever his max is so i think it's about 36 million and and there is a way he could make all the money back that would require him making getting a max contract uh, in 2028, uh, which a lot of good a lot of stuff needs to go right his way. Health, still playing at a high level, yeah. and so it's more likely that maybe he'll take yet another type of like max extension that's considered less than his max. Then, mm -hmm. in which case, okay, he is leaving. Let's say instead of 36, maybe like 50 million. So it is mm -hmm. a lot of money, no doubt yeah. about it. And so if you're a Knicks fan. You're feeling great that like wow he he did make he did make a big sacrifice no matter what but I don't think it just he's not giving up quite that much he's not sacrificing quite that much at that level but still I remember the days when making twenty million dollars a year like twenty years ago yeah, that, was, that was considered like holy crap that's a lot of money yeah now the NBA is in a place where making forty million a year is considered a massive discount that's crazy I don't know that's like you, you can. A lot of a lot of people. There's a lot of ways people are looking at this extension. That you know, wow, he's still he gave up so much, or that like he gave up uh, that he's still going to make a lot of money. Like he, he's, when you're making forty million dollars, and that's considered a massive discount, the NBA is in a great place. In a solid place, man. And the new TV deal is going to kick in in a few years, which will ultimately increase the salary cap. And so, I mean, this has to, as the cap is going up with this deal, I mean, how how do you see the Knicks potentially moving forward here in terms of potentially, you know, roster building? So the biggest thing is just they have a higher chance of keeping the guys they have now. Mm -hmm. The average team contender they probably have one max player, maybe two. And at best, you can have like five guys that are like really getting paid. Like you look at what happened with the Nuggets now. Yeah. They had Jokic making a max. They have Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. making the lower tier max. And then they have Aaron Gordon make a lot of money. And now all of a sudden they couldn't keep Contavious Caldwell Pope. And the average, so like the average good team, they have like five, maybe six players that they're really paying. Yeah. The Knicks have eight guys. They would have had nine if Isaiah Hardenstein was able to stay. But they've got eight guys that are like, you know, above at least above average rotation players. That is going to be rare for teams uh, as good as the Knicks that are legitimate contenders to roster that many guys with all the constraints coming with the second apron stuff. So now with Jalen making considerably less than what his max would be, they just have a better chance of keeping all those guys. There definitely is some trade opportunities that could potentially come down the line. Maybe mm -hmm. they are able to do another upgrade yet again if they do want to consolidate a little more. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is that this roster that they have now, this high level of depth, you can feel pretty good that they'll be able to stick together at least for these next three years. And we're going to get into the, that potential move, potential trade in a little bit. We, we're going to keep it on Brunson. We'll keep it on Brunson, give him the spotlight right now because he deserves it. They, they're saying the statues might be going up. They might be pouring the cement down outside on, on 34th and 7th as we speak. You know, a little offseason project for James Dolan as Madison Square Garden gets renovated. Brunson takes the back early. Knicks are in great shape. Orange and blue skies. Salute to everybody in the chat, man. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's throw number 11 in the chat to salute Jalen Brunson. Brunson tonight on a monumental deal for Brunson and the family, man. Shout out to Con Connor O'Neill, franchise channel member, new franchise channel member, $20 super chat. So Jalen Brunson made a sacrifice. CP making a sacrifice to update us. The least I can do is keep the good karma going. Salute CP. Uh, he says, get yourself a beer. Let's go, Knicks. It's our time. Salute to Connor, man. I don't drink beers anymore, man. I drink scotch, you know? But when you get old like me, you'll see, you kind of switch up. You switch up the vibes, man. So, you know, but but we appreciate Connor for the support. Call us up, man, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord as well. And so looking at this deal again, I'm just, just going to pull it up here. So the the player option here is for that 28-29 season. That's at $43 million, correct? 
That's at 43. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So essentially, he's taking some now, and then with the ability, if all goes well, he stays healthy, he can opt out of that and then get into the 50s, maybe 60 range on a potential max deal. Yeah. 70 even 70 yeah, right that's right yeah. that's right by that yeah. time it'll be 70 for, for you 50 will be will be uh the the new 30s late 30s and 40s by that time so where would a a how would a supermax come into play here would he need to be all nba in the last you know in two out of the next three years how, how would a, that supermax come into play here later so uh he can't get supermax early anymore since he was only able to do that with the mavs Right. Uh, but so once he finishes his 10th year 10th. of service, which is 2028, which is right before that player option, he can then opt out and get the 35 percent max, which is a super max. So the I so the idea is there is an opportunity for him to, OK, he's going to play these next four years out, the first three years of this extension, then opt out in 28, 29. And if he is still playing at a very high level and, you know, everything's going just as great as it is now he could then sign a max contract for i forgot what the number was i think it was like 418 over five maybe something like that yeah. something crazy he would technically be able to sign that and if that does happen he would actually end up making back almost all of the 113 million mm. that uh he's like leaving on the table so we'll see hopefully he is playing at that level where you they could reward him with that type of contract now you also mentioned with with the Knicks acquiring Macal Bridges, when and he's eligible contract extension eligible next summer. Go go into that a little bit. So he could technically extend in October, only in October, but it's like a three year deal, and it's for a, it'll be for a little less money. But then once uh, you get to the following off season in July, he's going to be eligible for basically the exact same extension Jalen Brunson just signed that uh, four years, hundred fifty six million. And if so, basically the same thing Jalen did, which if he takes that, I think he could definitely get more in free agency potentially. But if he takes it, that just like yet yep. another uh, good team friendly deal that will just help the Knicks further continue this window that they have. There, there you go, man. Uh, let me test the phone lines real quick here. Uh, 908, 908. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? What's up? It's uh, Jay from Philadelphia. Jay, how you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Gosh, hey, fantastic. So it seems you know, like the Knicks keep winning here, man. Like they can't do anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. I'm not used so to this, Brunson's man. the king of New York. You know, yeah. if, he, uh, if he wins a chip with the Knicks, you know, I don't think he'll ever buy a beer in the city ever again. Oh, no, so. no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, I just want to keep it quick. I just, I was, I've been thinking about the Carl Anthony Towns trade a lot. Mm, okay, and, okay. Uh, Sorry to change the subject a little, but, uh, you know, I, I hated it at first because, you know, I love Julius. We all love Julius. We're all attached to him, you know. I think we have too much of an emotional attachment to Julius. He's great, but I just – Carl Anthony Towns on the Knicks, I can – I'm like – I can only dream of it. It's amazing because, you know, imagine the yeah. pick and pop with Julius – or not Julius, sorry, Jalen Brunson and Cat – with um, Mikhail Bridges and OG in the corners and DiVincenzo lurking around. Everyone would be shooting over 45% from three. It'd be crazy. Yeah. And it'd give Bunsen so much time to cook in the paint. Yeah. It'd be absolutely insane. Okay. And I think it fits just way better than Julius Randle. So I think we should do it. All right. Pre appreciate the call, man. Call back any time, man. Yep. All right. For sure. Well, since he brought it up, you know, Let's talk about potentially what can happen here as do it. Brunson has allowed the Knicks to open the books up a little bit and, and try to avoid the dreaded second apron. I saw you over there look like you you were doing some math over there, man. What do we got? Is a Carl Anthony Towns trade possible, at least financially, to give the Knicks uh, you know still some wiggle room here as it relates to the apron? So I have thought about Carl Anthony Townsend Knicks because ever since they lost Isaiah Hardenstein, I'm just kind of looking at what center options they can get. Yeah. Most likely they don't get someone at the level of Carl Anthony Towns, but um, you know, mo most likely they just stick with Mitchell Robinson. They could mm -hmm. use their mid-level on another backup, maybe bring back a Chu as well. That's probably the safest route. But I have thought about 
Carl Anthony Towns to the Knicks because it is still possible. Because when they modified the Mikhail Bridges trade, they sent out more salary than they're taking in. That gave them the opportunity to still spend, uh, increase their payroll, spend more money. Mm, so, okay. so assuming, like, let's say that is on the table, there is an opportunity to get Carl Anthony Towns. They're going to want to uh, a couple of things. One, they need to send out more salaries than they're taking out. So the most logical guys I would go out include Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson. Uh, so that's number one, but they still need to send out more and it gets a little more complicated when you look at who else is on the roster. So one of the other ways they could get creative is including precious Achua. They can kind of like the way they use shake Milton, they mm-hmm. sign and traded him to increase whatever outgoing amount they needed. They could do something similar with precious Achua. So they still need to put more pieces, but it's definitely possible. The other thing is that it would have to be a three team trade because the wolves also can't take back more salary than they're sending out since mm-hmm. they're over the aprons. So another team would have to get involved, might have to take back uh, Mitchell Robinson, for example, to help things out. But uh, I'm not so it is possible because anyways, if the Knicks are doing this trade, they're going to be hard capped to the second apron because they're combining multiple players to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But I've done the math. It it is possible. They could make it happen by sending out Randall plus Mitchell Robinson plus whatever else uh, they needed just to get to that 50 million dollar, 49 million dollar amount the cat's making. Um, so no, I've, I've definitely looked into it. I, it is possible. The only thing is, I don't know if it's quite enough because the Knicks mm. did give up just about every draft pick every yeah. first round pick that they have to, uh, get Mikel Bridges. So would Randall being the centerpiece of this be enough to convince Minnesota or would there be another team willing to take Randall and give up the picks that, or whatever assets it is that Minnesota would want back? I don't know. That's mm. the thing. That's the only thing that we'd have to. We don't know that, that yeah. if uh, you know Minnesota will be satisfied. <laughs>